Is the meme real? Will Path of Exile 2 really fix every problem present in modern action role-playing games? Probably not, but we can find out together. Forever in ARPGs, flasks have been an ever-present, unsolvable problem. In the current iteration of PoE 1, for example, the end goal of flasks for most people is ensuring they're entirely automated and near irrelevant to actual gameplay. Of course, I'm referring to either obtaining a Mage Blood, which can completely automate four of your magic flasks, or ensuring all your utility flasks are rolled with instilling orbs to have the implicit reused when charges reach full. By the early endgame in Path of Exile, flasks just act as a greater defensive or offensive layer on top of your character. They don't serve any actual gameplay anymore. Some builds might continue to use life flasks, but the goal is always to bolster your character with utility flasks only. Of course, exceptions exist, but this is the rule. Path of Exile 2 is completely doing away with this idea. Essentially, Triple G is changing flasks from being items you should constantly be drinking by pressing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 over and over and over again, or automating them with various crafting methods to purely reactionary items. How did all this begin? How will players react to it? Will it be better for the game? Will Path of Exile 2 finally fix the flask spam problem? I'm positive, but understand the wariness of the community. Now, my fellow exiles, let us dive into the fray. Ever since Path of Exile's inception, Triple G has been cognizant of the problem with flasks in ARPGs. In the very beginning of the genre, flasks used to be potions that could either fill your health or mana globes. They also dropped on the ground, meaning they were expendable and you could run out of the potions themselves. This was a staple in various ARPGs, using the same old formula as the beginning. Some updated the idea and made potions something you always carried, and just made the resource needed to use them drop off monsters. Then along came Path of Exile. 1. Triple G decided flasks would be items you could find and upgrade in a variety of ways, giving them actual affixes like other items. This was new and amazing! 2. While the flasks were items you could find and alter, their charges weren't resources you needed to pick up off the ground. Their charges simply refilled as you slaughtered hordes of monsters, no zigzagging around the battlefield necessary. Additionally, flasks automatically gained all their charges back when you returned to town in Path of Exile. This isn't a staple in most ARPGs. And mild spoilers here, it's not a staple in Path of Exile 2. And third, Path of Exile introduced many different types of flasks in the form of utility and unique flasks. Each was special and accomplished a very specific offensive or defensive layer. Some of the most interesting items in all of Path of Exile are flasks or revolve around them. However, as time went by, most flask usage transformed into entirely automated defensive and offensive layers. Players quickly started playing flask piano once utility flasks were added, meaning they constantly pressed one, two, three, four, five, to keep getting the buffs their flasks provided. Many builds sought to optimize out the need for life or mana flasks entirely as well. This meant the goal for most PoE endgame builds was to completely mitigate the need to play around flasks. In fact, the best builds made use of tools that just automated them entirely. As I joked about earlier, everyone dreams of finding a mage blood, an extremely rare unique belt that causes the effects of up to four of your leftmost magic utility flasks to constantly apply to your character. Then there's what the normal but established Path of Exile players usually do. Gather tons of instilling orbs and craft the implicit reused when charges reach full onto all of their utility flasks, meaning as you go through maps slaying hundreds of mobs, your flasks are constantly applying to you without you needing to play flask piano. The only time you might have some downtime with this method is during boss fights, but that's it. While Mage Blood and the various instilling orb affixes remove the need for flask piano, they also turn flasks into a near zero interaction mechanic. With instilling orbs introduced, we interact very little with our flasks early on in our build. Grinding your games does not want that to happen, 
in Path of Exile 2. We already know a batch of the sweeping system changes to flasks arriving in PoE 2, alongside the developers' intentions with these changes. It's a drastic shift from Path of Exile 1's design. Well, let's take a look. First, flasks will no longer create effects that are long-lasting or buffing your character constantly. For example, there will be no more quick silver flasks in PoE 2. Additionally, I would guess other flasks like basalt, diamond, granite, silver, and so on and so forth will go the way of the Val in Path of Exile 2. Instead of these flasks us exiles will always want on, the flasks in PoE 2 will be designed to be reactionary. This gives us, in all likelihood, life flasks, mana flasks, shield flasks, and resistance flasks. I'm sure there will be some innovation and cool unique ones, but those are likely the base set. Triple G wants us to use life potions after failing to dodge a massive attack from a rampaging giant. They want us to use a mana potion after spamming a host of powerful skills. They want us to use a shield flask when there's no way we can dodge the Bog Hag's Fire Blast. They want us to use a Topaz flask when a huge lightning bolt flies our way. From my perspective, don't attack me. This is a good thing. Those layers accomplished using the Path of Exile 1 flasks will be in other areas of the game and character creation. If our current goal is to automate away flasks in PoE 2, our goal will be to make the most powerful defensive and offensive momentary layers with our potions. Because in addition to these design changes, potions will also be a much more limited resource. Right now, it's trivial to refill flasks. While that's probably not going to change in PoE 1, in PoE 2, potions will be a true mechanic we'll need to pay attention to. Normal monsters don't refill flask charges anymore. Magic and rare monsters refill less. And it's unclear on how many charges unique monsters fill. It might be all charges, or it just might be a large amount. This already makes it harder to use our potions. Then, if we want a full instant refill, we either need to find a pool outside a boss room, or we must travel to town and use a well that fills all our flasks to full. That's right, we can no longer just teleport to town and refill our potions with ease. Those three big changes are what we know about potions or flasks in PoE 2. And we're sure to learn more in the coming months and when we actually get our hands on PoE 2. There's an interesting split in the Path of Exile community concerning flasks and, frankly, I don't quite understand it. Part of the community is excited for flasks becoming reactionary measures, something that you actually have to think about using. Another section loves being able to completely automate flasks. They absolutely love the ability that they can make this item almost pointless. It's just another layer. Some people don't care, and others seem to seek a mix of both. A bit of automation and a bit of reaction. I would also love a mix of both. That's difficult without placing limitations on how one gears their character. Could they allow only for two non-reactionary flasks and classify them differently? Probably, but their minds already seem made up. They want flasks to be weighty. They want them to be used in reaction to events in the game, not on autocast. What will this mean if Mageblood is in PoE 2? Well, it's likely not going to look the same at all. They entirely think this solves the flask spam problem present in PoE 1 and almost every other ARPG since the genre's inception. To tell if PoE 2 will truly fix it, we will assuredly need to play the game and see if we'll end up constantly spamming life and mana flasks, or if the balance and the design is in place to prevent this big ARPG problem from plaguing PoE 2 as well. Really, I do understand the joy of being able to automate away a part of the gearing to further cement yourself as a god. At the same time, I understand Triple G wanting to turn this into an actual part of the game again. I believe they'll be able to do it. They are, after all, the ARPG gods. Does anyone else who has been exiled on the shores of Rayclast have a different opinion on flasks? Is Triple G making a huge mistake here, or is it the right direction for the game? 
Did I say flasks too many times in this video? Probably. Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and like the video if you enjoyed it, fellow exile. And here's an even bigger shout out to everyone who supports me on Patreon and through a YouTube membership. I'll be keeping the PoE and Beyond content coming as we dash toward 3.23 in December and PoE 2 in June of next year. Please check out these other videos. I have an inkling you'll enjoy them. Tala Moana.